On Monday, I stood in front of your office with Adi Barkin. I told the story of my sexual assault. I told it because I read... The Republican the senator from Arizona cornered. What you are doing is allowing someone who actually violated a woman to sit in the Supreme Court. This Just before this, Jeff Flake had released a statement saying he would vote yes to advance Brett Kavanaugh's nomination. That's what you're telling all of these women. That's what you're telling me right now. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You're telling me that my assault doesn't matter, that what happened to me doesn't matter, and that you're going to let people who do these things into power. That's what you're telling me. The confrontation went on for four minutes, broadcast live on television. Before the vote, each senator had a chance for closing arguments. Democrat Chris Coons is friends with Jeff Flake. I worry sincerely about the message we are sending to assault survivors if we plow ahead with this nomination. Shortly after he spoke, Again, both men left the room. They met. Other Democrats joined them. Flake missed his turn to speak and returned just before the vote with a new plan. I'll move it out of committee, but I will only be comfortable moving on the floor until the FBI has done more investigation than they have already. So Flake voted to advance Kavanaugh's confirmation today, but his final vote is conditional on a week-long investigation into the allegations Christine Blasey Ford made against Brett Kavanaugh. Two other Republicans, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski, joined Flake in threatening to withdraw their votes. With the majority uncertain, Republicans complied. So I think what Jeff is trying to do is end this the best he possibly can to accommodate some people on the other side and to, you know, bring the committee to be, uh, together if possible. So this is democracy. Am I mad at Jeff? No. Am I in a different place? Yes. At the Senate's request, Donald Trump ordered a supplemental FBI investigation into Kavanaugh's background to be limited in scope and last one week. I just want it to work out well for the country. If that happens, I'm happy. Have you thought at all about a replacement for Judge Kavanaugh? Not even a little bit. So why the sudden change of heart for Jeff Flake? He was asked if it was that moment in the elevator with protesters. He shook his head no. Rosie. Okay, Lindsay, on the FBI investigation, what do we know about what that's going to look like? Well, officials aren't giving us a whole lot of exact details. What we do know is that it needs to be finished in a week and that its goal is to look into credible current allegations. What isn't clear is if that means it's only going to look into the allegations brought forward by Christine Blasey Ford or if it will also look into other allegations. This isn't a criminal investigation. It is a background check, but the consequences of potentially lying to the FBI are serious. The other thing we know tonight, Rosie, is who is going to participate, including the man who was allegedly in the room with Brett Kavanaugh when the assault happened. His lawyers say that he will participate with law enforcement agencies so long as it remains confidential. Thanks, Lindsay. That's the CBC's Lindsay Duncombe in Washington tonight. Lots of drama today and in the days to come. Let's get a better sense of what's at stake for the Republicans and what the delay could mean for Donald Trump's nominee. Keith Bogue joins us now from Washington. Uh, Keith, as we saw there in Lindsay's piece, this delay, it took everyone by surprise. Uh, we expected it to be heading towards a confirmation vote very quickly. So, so why isn't that really happening? Well, from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's point of view, Things became brutally simple the moment it seemed he would lose Jeff Flake's vote if he didn't agree to a delay. He simply couldn't afford to. Okay. If he lost Flake and one more vote, the nomination would go down. Plus, what Senator Flake did was give added force to the Democrats' argument that Kavanaugh was entitled to the benefit of the doubt only if every effort had been made to try to discover the truth. And, of course, Republicans had repeatedly rejected the idea of reopening the FBI background check into Kavanaugh. But frankly, none of this would be happening now were it not for Christine Blasey Ford's compelling and credible testimony yesterday. Okay, so there's going to be this delay. There's going to be this investigation of, of some kind, fairly narrow. What is the risk for the Republicans, though, uh, as that's ongoing for the next week? Well, the obvious risk 
is that the inv investigation will turn up evidence that supports the allegations of sexual assault. But there are other risks, too. The delay allows time for other parts of Kavanaugh's testimony to sink into the national consciousness. For instance, there are questions about his truthfulness and about whether he has the independence of mind necessary to be a Supreme Court judge. Listen to this clip from the hearing yesterday. This whole two-week effort has been a calculated and orchestrated political hit, fueled with apparent pent-up anger about President Trump and the 2016 election, fear that has been unfairly stoked about my judicial record, revenge on behalf of the Clintons, and millions of dollars in money from outside left-wing opposition groups. So that language goes beyond conservative ideology. It goes beyond partisanship. It's the tribal language that right-wing conspiracy theorists use. It's made some wonder whether Kavanaugh could ever be impartial when, for instance, making a judgment about, say, legislation from a government led by Democrats. So if Kavanaugh's opponents focus on those things next week, that could further imperil the razor-thin support he has in the Senate. Okay, Keith Boak, thank you for that. appreciate it. Thank you. As we saw in Lindsay's story, there was lots of back and forth inside that room again today, and everyone had a strong reaction to yesterday's testimonies. Here's a little bit more of that. In my opinion, this has been an intergalactic freak show. Right now, the way this process is run, we're not running it like we the people. It's being run like we the ruling party. I think the way Dr. Ford and Judge Kavanaugh have been treated as a scandal, and it is cruel, reckless, and indecent. This was someone who was aggressive and belligerent. I have never seen someone who wants to be elevated to the highest court in our country behave in that manner. I think an FBI investigation is going to do nothing. It's not going to tell you any more than we know now. It's going to just keep it going and going and going till he breaks and he won't, until the next five come forward. We should thoroughly investigate this before moving forward. To do any, any other thing is to diminish the truth, diminish the issue of sexual harassment in this country, and to again relegate ourselves to what I believe is a dark, dark element of our society. Christine Blasey Ford welcomed the new investigation with a caveat. A thorough FBI investigation is critical to developing all the relevant facts, said her lawyer. But no artificial limits as to time or scope should be imposed on this investigation.